I recently made my very first non-alcoholic beer, and I told you then what I'm going to tell you right now. Brewing non-alcoholic beer is great. It's cheap, fast, simple, and still super fun and interesting to brew. With a little experience under my belt and some leftover dark malts on the shelf, this week I'm going to make a non-alcoholic stout. The All Out Stout from Athletic Brewing is the best NA stout I've found so far, but to be honest, it wouldn't fool anyone in a blind taste test. It hits on a lot of the right flavors, but the body isn't right, and even though it's non-alcoholic, I'm hoping for a little something from the yeast. Just a little fruit to convince you you're drinking an actual stout. Now, let's make some beer. For this beer, I'm starting with some reverse osmosis water and I'm building a water profile to support a nice full body. And I want to show you one of my favorite things about these brew tools pro brewing systems. I used manual mode for my first couple batches, but recently I've been using recipe mode. You can choose a recipe you've used before, add a new recipe manually, or add a new recipe from Brewfather. It's like magic. After I do all my research and messing around, I make sure the recipe is good to go in Brewfather and then send it over to my B40 on brew day. Complete any missing fields and now the system will guide me through the brew day. But one of the only things this thing can't do yet is add the grains. For this beer, I'm using just two and a half pounds of grain and everything but the oats was malted right here in Colorado by Proximity Malt. I have 20% brown, 20% chocolate, 15% dark chocolate, 15% chocolate wheat, 15% Vienna, and 15% flaked oats. Let's get it going. And just like that, we're mashed in and our 30 minute timer starts now. It's a super nice winter day today, so I'm pulling double duty and smoking some country style pork ribs on this old Weber kettle. This thing is apparently from the 60s, but with a snake of briquettes and a little smoking wood sprinkled on top, it still smokes pork just as well as the new ones. If you wanna see what's going on in the hops and gnarly kitchen, let me know in the comments. Cause if there's anything better than good beer, it's good beer and good food. Our quick 30 minute mash is complete. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. With the basket up and out of the wort, I'm doing a quick cold sparge to rinse the grains and collect my pre-boil volume. Now it's time for our first hop addition. Here's 21 grams of Centennial and we'll start working our way up to a boil.
We're 45 minutes into the boil and it's time for some more hops. Here's 14 grams of Cascade, and I'm also gonna add a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. Five minutes later and the system is telling me it's time to sanitize the chiller. 10 minutes to go. And just like that, it's time to chill this thing down and get ready for fermentation. As I plug in my garden hose, the return temp shows real-time chilling speed from this counterflow chiller. And as soon as it hits the right temperature, I'll send it to the fermenter and add a little oxygen on the way. This beer is getting Imperial Independence, which should give us some extra fruity yeast character since my glycol chiller is fully maxed out and will be fermenting at ambient temperature. If this was a full strength stout, I'd be pretty concerned about this, but we only need to get from 1010 to 1006. Chalk that up to another positive for NA beers. No temperature control, no problem. Now, let's see how this thing turned out. With this beer, I want those roasty toasty stout flavors, a full body, and a little yeast character to round it off. As you can see, the color is dark dark brown, almost black, and the head is tan, but honestly a little lighter than I'd expect based on the color of the beer. Going in for the sniff test, I'm getting a lot of chocolate, some coffee, and bread, but I can't detect any of those hops, which could be a negative depending on how you like your stouts. And the flavor is similar to the aroma with big chocolate coffee flavors, similar to a good cold brew coffee. And I think we did manage to get a little yeast expression here with a hint of raisiny cherry. The body is maybe slightly more full than that example from Athletic Brewing, but it still falls a little short. And I think I know why. Recently, I've been thinking about body in two parts. You've got the fluffiness that comes from the water profile and then a syrupy thing on top of that from unconsumed sugar. Right now, this beer is down here in the fluffy but not syrupy zone and I'd like it to be a little further up here. So next time, instead of taking the nanny state approach where you build a recipe with a tiny grain bill targeting super low gravities, I wanna try and approach Champion by Lalamond. Basically, we'll target a higher original gravity around 1020 and use a yeast strain that's only capable of digesting simple sugars. More to come. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.